And my guess is the inequality goes this way. Okay? So we have the oil producing countries. Okay? They get a surplus value um, greater than this. That is, to make it perfectly consistent, they get a surplus value plus the subsumed class revenue. And my guess is this is greater plus whatever expenditures they have to, to make to, to, you know, to get this monopoly position. So my guess is th that their inequality goes this way. And what that means is that the monopoly revenues of OPEC become larger and larger and larger. Okay? Why? Because they charge a higher price for the barrels of oil to the refineries. So the refineries in turn have a monopoly position and they're able to charge higher and higher prices for the consumer goods that they sell. That's gasoline at the pump. That keeps going up. That's the price of the V good greater than the unit value. As well as the price of the C good that they're selling to other capitalists. And so these swell in the uh, in the uh, uh, Standard Oil of New Jersey, in the companies that are purchasing the oil from, from OPEC and, re and refining it and then selling it as either consumer goods um, or as a, a, a means of production, as a, a raw materials to other capitalists. And so you can see what would happen in this example of what economists sometimes call sequential monopoly. A higher price for uh, barrels of oil gets translated into higher prices at the pump as what the, the, the company that's refining the oil has the power to pass on the higher prices into higher prices at the pump and higher prices for more raw material to other capitalists. And the re end result of this is something that people worry about right now, which is that the workers have a higher price for the V good that they have to spend. That would be gas times you know, the, the gas that they purchase for their cars. And then, of course, there's everything else. I'll just put everything else to, down here. So all their other consumption here. So this is gas consumption. Okay, gas consumption plus everything else. Well, you can see what happens. As the price of gas goes up, then the qu and they can't really drop this too much. If you get an automobile, what are you going to do? You can't push it with your foot. You need gas. So is this is a very inelastic demand. And as this goes up, people worry about cutting into other kinds of expenditures. All these other consumptions would fall, and that may hurt the recovery. Say by the same logic, um, for the other capitalists, they now have to pay. These are now the buying capitalists. They now have to pay a higher and higher price for energy. So that's the sea good that they're buying over here. And if that keeps going up, then these may fall. Okay. So it, on the consumer side, we get a drop in consumption. Over here, we get a drop in these expenditures. If one of these is delta C plus delta V, if that falls, then you have, as a result of a higher, put it all together, a higher price for the barrels of oil set by cartel, higher costs to the uh, oil refinery companies, so they have to pay a higher cost, let me get that in here explicitly, for the raw material oil. So that goes up, this gets because they're paying a higher price. The bump, the increase here is a result of these oil companies paying a higher subsumed class payment. That's where this extra revenue comes. But then the oil companies offset their higher cost to OPEC by charging higher prices for gasoline and for raw materials. And so their revenues can swell above and beyond what they're paying to OPEC. But the end result of this on the U.S. economy is a, is a terrible, if you want to think of it that way, tax on workers and tax on other industrial capitalists, and that could lead to a, a, a recession. So that's how we might make use of this kind of surplus 
or value and surplus value analysis to understand something which is going on um, in the U.S. economy right at the present. And I shall stop with that.